every movie that comes out is about what? All the new movies. Aliens, UFOs. You know, I was praying to God and I said, God, our young people, they just don't want to read the Bible. They're just not finding. What, you know, it's just like, and God spoke to me as plain as I'm talking to you right now and told me, he said, Hollywood has stolen from me. So you know what I did, Pastor? I started studying Hollywood and I found out George Lucas and Spielberg and all these guys, you know what? They read the Bible and they get their sci-fi stories from the Bible. Ezekiel seeing the wheels. What was he seeing? He was seeing interdimensional crap. They go back and find the angels that was merging with the Nephilim. They look at the war that Abraham fought against the giants and the spirits and the hybrids. They look at the war that Moses fought against the Amalekites and Amalek and all these giants. And they got all these good old stories. We knew nothing about them. We think that God is somewhere in sandy ground walking around with no shoes on and no technology whatsoever. And we don't understand everything we're seeing. They stole from God. The most interesting story there is. Is God raising up a people to fight hybrid evil beings. Am I saying there's spaceships? I ain't seen one. But I'm just saying that. In this time, we're about to see things we've never seen before. Because for some reason, we're comfortable and kick back in our chairs at church and we think we got it made, but we're not looking at the signal where our children are getting eviler and eviler and the music is getting more and more wicked and the entertainment, they're sacrificing themselves to Satan and praying to Satan now on the Video Music Awards. And finally, you're going to hear a lot about this, so I got to deal with it. 2012, saw a movie preview of a movie called 2012 where they basically say that that's the end of all things because all the calendars, the Mayan calendar, the Sumerian calendar, all the ancient calendars, the Egyptian calendar, astrological calendar, all of them say that 2012 is it. They say that the new world would be created in 1776 and they say that at the end of this in 2012, this is when Nimrod comes and completes the pyramid and all this and all that, you know, whatever they're saying. But they're going to try to confuse you as a believer so if you don't study the word and know what you know in this time they're going to make you think that they know what you don't know are y'all paying attention to me and that's what this capstone on this pyramid is going to represent that's what it represents right now the annuus coeptus and the norbus odum seclorum new world order great undertaking are y'all paying attention to what I'm trying to tell you Alistair Crowley wrote a book called The Book of the Law. This is the symbol. His one law was this. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. So he believed, do whatever you want to do. That is the rule. Do what thou wilt. This is something Alistair Crowley said. He said, all may understand in instantly that their souls, their lives, and every relation with every other human being and every circumstance depends upon magic and the right comprehension and right application thereof. That's in his book 777. He stresses magic to open a person up for spiritual inhabitants. So Nephilim can have a place to rule. I mean, if you're up in a concert and 15,000 people are out there chanting your name, the Nephilim has found his place again. If you're a spirit and don't have a body, and then you can jump into a world leader, maybe even a president. And everybody put your picture on their shirts. I'm just 
this preacher and don't leave. Boy, I'm black for you know the triggers. Be out of here. Have to take offering early. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Look at somebody and say, don't be naive. Gosh, don't be naive. We are called out sons and daughters of the Most High. We ain't supposed to be walking around blind. The Bible tells us we're not children of the dark. We're children of the light. You're supposed to know better. Look at somebody and say, you're supposed to know better. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. Spiritual wickedness where? What are we fighting, y'all? This organization is called Ordo Templi Orientis. It is known to every famous person as the OTO. This is an organization. I got a friend who's pretty famous. Well, we're not friends right now, but we were real close friends when he was on his way to be famous. Sold a million copies of an album. Got a phone call. Told me. He said, man, I got a phone call from a group. It's a fraternal order for famous people. OTO. He said they made me an offer and wouldn't let me refuse it and basically told me that if I didn't join this organization that my career would end. I would lose my record contract or I'd be tossed in jail on some charges or something. But they said if I joined it I'll continue to be famous. This organization is called the OTO. It's the Order of the Temple of the East or the Order of Oriental Templars. This is an organization under the leadership at the time when Alistair Crowley was living. He led it, this organization, and he reorganized it around his law of Thelema, which is to do what thou wilt. Y'all remember that? Y'all got it? It was kind of a built around religious principles, but the religion was Satanism. Are y'all with me? So basically, this organization is what people would get into if they wanted to be famous. So if you wanted to be famous and have some power in the world or be known for your ability or whatever, you had to get in this organization because they had to make sure of a few things. They had to make sure that, one, you wouldn't don't tell on them, so they had to have something on you. So to be inducted in there, it says that the membership is based on an initiatory system with a series of degree ceremonies that use ritual drama to establish fraternal bonds. In other words, they make you like, if you're a man, they make you have sex with a man, and they take pictures of it, you know, and they'll threaten to show it if you go, you know, public, or they'll make you do something despicable, and then they tell you that they will end your career if you ever come out and try to talk against the OTO, because what the OTO is, it's a secretive organization that teaches you how to manipulate certain Nephilim spirits, so these spirits can get in you, lift you up, make you famous. If you refuse it, you just won't be famous. How do they start people out? They start people out that will get in these organizations with this, satanic ritual abuse. They go find a child, small child, let me read it to you, it's going to make a little more sense. In satanic ritual abuse, an infant or child is chosen to be the special one. This is the one that is going to grow up and be inhabited by a Nephilim, a special Nephilim spirit. So when it's one that wants to be great, they start these children out very young. Are y'all still with me? Child is chosen to be the special one through whom the cultists will be able to receive power. To receive power, there must always be a sacrifice. We know that. That's a kingdom principle. A helpless infant or child is chosen to be the living sacrifice unto Satan. The child is subjected to numerous painful and terrifying rituals whereby demons are summoned to come into the child, making him or her a little battery of satanic powers that can be accessed by the cult members. So you got this little innocent child being raped and molested and everything so they can pull these spirits out and become one with them sexually and they can and channel these spirits through this child. This child is none of the wiser. They don't understand what's going on. It's a child. And the most common way these powers are accessed is by performing acts of sexual perversion on the child. 
Yeah. Some of these rulers believe that the secret to, uh, to eternal life or true power in this life is the molestation of a young child because you take their purity and you use it as power. This is why children are abused constantly and these abused children grow up one day. A lot of times they grow up without knowledge of what happened to them. They just know they have a deficit and they want somebody to approve of them. Not just mother and father, but they need a whole lot of people to approve of them because their self-esteem is gone. So what do they do? They get a talent. They get an ability. They're able to sing. They're able to act. They're able to perform. What do they do? They get up before people. When they get up before people, people clap. That's approval. They love it. They want some more. They'll do anything to get that role. They'll do anything to get that record deal. They will do anything, even sell their soul to the devil through the OTO to be famous. Not knowing that all along they were set up for this great spirit to inhabit them and receive the praise of men. Gothics, Satanists, occultists all believe that Satan was misjudged in heaven. If you ever wondered, how do you worship Satan? And he's Satan. Sound dumb, don't it? Well, they believe God did not give Satan the grace that he gave man. So they believe that Satan was done wrong and misjudged in heaven by God and was unfairly kicked out. And they believe that he will give them fame and fortune for pleading his case and standing against God. Y'all still with me? Who are these children? Molested, raped, abandoned, left, beaten. Whatever happened when they were young, they grew up seeking the approval of people and they became what we know today as stars. This is part of the vision God originally showed me. Kiss, which is the knights in Satan's service. Wearing paint, paint, that paint on their face is a symbol of death. They whiten out their faces and they put expressions on there. So they're really saying, I'm dead and something in me, I'm channeling it and it is living or expressing itself through me. In case you wondered. This is ACDC, which is Antichrist Devil Child on their album cover. This guy's showing you horns in his head. Mega Death. Look, this is the Rolling Stones. Look at the title of their album. Sympathy for the Devil. Because they believe the devil was misjudged and done wrong. This is Black Sabbath, which is a desecration of God's holy Sabbath. And of course, this is Led Zeppelin, who wrote the backwards praise and worship song to Satan called My Sweet Satan. Forward, it's called Stairway to Heaven. If you play that song in its entirety backwards, it's a whole praise and worship song to Satan. They even bought Aleister Crowley's house and wrote the song in his house so they could channel the true spirit of the most wicked man that ever lived. It is the number one selling single of all times. Stairway to heaven. Go on YouTube, play it backwards. It'll, it'll surprise them. My kids hate when I do it. You know, every now and then I got to bring them in the room, just make sure they're right. We're we finna hear Starway to Heaven. I'm finna play it backwards. Better do what I say. Okay, Daddy, yes. Please don't. No, something about writing a whole song forward and it praising Satan backwards. Satanic ritual abuse. This is Marilyn Manson. See why he paints his face white? He claims to be dead and inhabited by Satan. This right here, watch these symbols because we're going to use them later. This right here is the upside down pentagram 
Alistair Crowley taught in his book 777 that there was special magic in the pentagram. So when you tunnel through the pentagram, you get a special satanic anointing according to Alistair Crowley. He has teachings on YouTube. I hope and pray you don't listen to them. 666, of course, is the mark of the beast, the name of the devil's number, the number of his name. It, uh, the Bible said you will not be able to buy or sell in the last days unless you have the mark of the beast or the beast owns you or you pledge your allegiance to the beast or you are on the beast side. I have to paraphrase it because folk don't understand. Here's the pentagram again, same symbol. Inside this pentagram is a goat's head, which that goat is the half man, half woman goat called Baphomet. If you've seen the movie 300, Pan, who is actually Baphomet, is the goat head. He was playing like a harp in the movie. It was creepy. I don't know why they did that. But the Baphomet is the goat's head, and he's a representative of Satan. But what he really represents is the scapegoat of the children of Israel because the Bible tells us that they were commanded by the priest to put their sins into this goat and drive this goat over the cliff to destroy the sins, while well, a Satanist will say, hey, bring that goat back, we're going to worship him because he represents sin. This right here, of course, is skull and bones. It's always represented uh, death or destruction. It's used in Satanism and Freemasonry quite frequently. And this is Anton LaVey, the creator of the Church of Satan. He said he was inspired to create it by his teacher and mentor, Aleister Crowley. Alistair Crowley gave it to him, and then he gave it to Marilyn Manson. Now Marilyn Manson is the chief high priest of the Church of Satan. Are y'all still with me? And of course, I've already explained this. I explained it a little earlier, but that is the Tower of Babel, the Eye of Nimrod, and that is the great undertaking of the coming, as they say, coming one, who is called the one or the fallen, or, you know, I mean, we, we're hearing about it in movies and everything else, hearing about it in 2012. This is when they say this event is supposed to happen. They're making it look like it's supposed to be a year of mass destruction, but really, it's the secret to it is that if you climb the 13 steps of this pyramid, from 1776 you end up in their numerology at the year 2012 so they believe him and all Illuminati and Satanists and all occultists are believing that 2012 is the year when the undertaking will be complete and the tower and that power from Nimrod will come in the incarnated one which would be the son of perdition the Antichrist So for the devil to get this into our young people, he, the Bible says God calls the young because they're strong, so the devil's automatically going to target the young because once you get the young going, there ain't no stopping them. So what the devil had to do was bring Satanism to a level where it could be accepted among us as just normal folk. They can hide and do all that weird stuff in the Freemason and all that, you know, all that's hidden, but for it to come out into the open and be openly worshipped by them, they have to create what we know as a subculture. Culture. A subculture is a break off extension of a true parent culture. So when it's a subculture, you take the ideas of a parent culture and you deconstruct them and create an understanding that usually, in most cases, only is prosperous or works to the benefit of the creators, but everybody else that follows and mimics it are usually in some kind of deficit. Are y'all with me? So they create goth. Celebration of death and darkness. Kids start walking around the school, whited out faces, white wash walls. That represents death. Channeling ancient spirits. These are the children of molestation. These are the children that's been in satanic ritual abuse. Here they are. Got this is Brandon Lee. Of course, he gave his life for the movie he was in, The Crow. Here's another guy, these guys. And then, of course, the Grim Reaper is synonymous with goth because he represents the one that will come to take your soul. This is where the skull head is at its highest, I guess, in Satanism when it is worn or walked around by this Grim Reaper. Then, of course, movies, Twilight and all these vampire movies that highlight the undead and all of this witchcraft and stuff. It became real popular in the 80s. But I told you in the vision that it had to get deeper. The devil had another plan. He needed it among those that were more influential with the major part of our culture or society. And, of course, then we know that hip hop went goth. So here comes the subculture of hip hop and hip hop begins to model death and destruction and darkness. 
So now you got not only suburban white youth and goth doing it, but now you got young black boys walking around with skulls and demon faces all over their clothes, on earrings, got the belt. Uh, oh yeah, they just brought goth to hip hop. Just brought goth to hip hop. Biggie Smalls, here he is, wearing a shirt with 666 on it. The mark of the beast. Look at these brothers. This brother got a new, one of the brand new Rockaway shirts, which I don't wear his stuff because this shirt, Rockaway, says friend or foe, and it's a picture of Jesus. Friend or foe? That means friend or enemy. Friend or enemy? Jesus? Yeah. There here is right here is what's his name? Game? Yeah, pointing to the game, pointing to his marijuana leaves on his shirt. Ain't that illegal? <laughs> there is this brother tattooed all up. I mean, he's got a bandit. He's like, I'm gonna rob you. I'm gonna rob you. Buy my album or I'm gonna rob you. I mean, look at him. I mean, somebody is hiding their purse right now from the picture. But these brothers are showing you an evil. It's celebration of evil. This right here is plies. Look at him. Draws showing. Why you want to show your draws? Don't you know that's nasty? And gay? If you knew anything about prison, you'd understand what the showing of the draws mean. Man ain't supposed to show their behinds like that. Only when somebody want to get it. Can I tell the truth in here? Boy, somebody. Hip-hop goes goth. Keeps going goth. Celebration of death, darkness. What did Alistair Crowley say? Magic. Open you up. Put a spirit in you. Change who you are. Look at the cover story in Rolling Stone. A woman possessed. This article says Beyonce is gripped by a spirit so powerful it even has a name. A powerful spirit? A spirit in her to be worshipped by men and women? How many Christians went to her concert? Look at them. Look at the difference. Look at this. Is that the same woman? She says it's not. She's openly telling you that there is a spirit in her working in her when she's performing. So the times you know her, you're entertaining a spirit or entertain by a spirit. Yeah, true definition of entertain, detain so something can enter you. So, Beyonce says, I have someone else that takes over when it's time for me to work. That's when y'all know her. And when I'm on stage, this alter ego that I've created that kind of protects me and who I really am. Let's talk about this for a second. Y'all still with me? Oh, it's gonna get good. Look at her, what is she doing? What is she doing? See, what did I tell you? They have to signal you to let you know where your praise is going. She's putting the triangle over Here she's showing you horns. This is the worst one. She has a motorcycle handlebars, but they're in the shape of the five point pentagram. And in the middle of the pentagram is the half man, half woman goat. Baphomet, the symbol that is used to channel Satan 
from the 777 of Alistair Crowley. This is what separates.